<laughs> Talk about target practice, huh? Out comes the one iron again. Up, 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 up. And on the green. Nicholas hit an enormous drive. He's using a forearm for his second. He made it. Nicholas tries for an eagle. The birdie gives Jack a 72 and a total of 210. He's pushed it into the gallery. He's still four under, coming to 17. Nicholas is hitting the ball so precisely that he's backing up every iron shot. All that remains is to learn whether Jack will tie or break Hogan's open scoring record. Two putts for 276. One putt for 275. There it is. The lowest score ever made in the United States Open Championship. What a performance today. One of the best golf clubs in New Jersey, if not the world, and goes toe to toe, pound for pound, when it comes to history with anywhere. This is all access, ball to strong. All right, we're gonna take you inside the governor's room here where every major decision and thing that's happened here at Ball to Straw, all of those discussions have happened right here in this amazing room. And take a look at this, because this is really cool. Ball to Straw has the distinction of being one of just a handful of golf courses that's on the National Historic Landmark Registry. Right there in the grill room here, and this is where all the history of the club is. What a spot to hang out. Huh? Old room where I'm sure a lot of uh, celebrations and cocktails were enjoyed here. Now, does a room like this get a lot of action, or is this just kind of So they redid it, and they, they created this bar with uh, all these uh, tables and high tops, and, and it's very busy now. Okay. It, it was busy before, but it's very, very busy now. You know, we'll start with the club champions here. No better um, than yeah. the club champion to tell us that. It's nice when you got the club champ giving you a tour of the club <laughs> champs. Well, I got to tell you, it's nice to come into this room with your name on the wall. But, uh, twice, right? yep, 12 and 16. Do you remember how much you won by in each? I won, uh, that one was uh, five and four, and uh, 16, I won uh, two and one. Do you see your name back on that wall again or what? what yeah, I, I do, I do. I want it back on there. When so. is it held, fall? It's in September. Yeah. You can see the first tee of the upper from there, which is spectacular. And then you have the signature fourth hole here. That's it. Right out in there. It's just the beautiful. That is the signature hole then. That would be our signature hole. Yeah. How about the Baltus Roll Lager? We we have a brewery in New Providence that uh, makes signature beers for us. They have a the 1895 Lager yeah. and the 120, uh, 125th anniversary Pilsner. Doing something right when you got your own beers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Private label. So what I love so much about Baltus Roll is the various places where you could hang out here after your round or at night. I was asking Greg, like, how do you decide like the vibe you want to go with? So for example, over here it's more formal. You got to wear jacket and tie for the men. In here, no jacket required. Downstairs has got, you know, just come off the golf course. You can just have your golf outfit on. So different areas of this club required, you know, have different rules. It's pretty cool. All right, so if I'm here with my jacket and tie, maybe with the family about to eat my nice steak dinner during the club championship, I want to see the results, final hole. Boom, 18th green right outside the window here. All right, so I'm going to call this history hallway here at Baltus Roll. Look, starting with the 03 US Open and all of the history throughout the years of the events played here, the 1915 US Open. Look how incredible some of these photos are. Takes you down here, you see Hogan, of course, in the photo. And as the years go on, we start to see names like Arnie and Jack. As you can see, here's a, here's a handshake on the final green in 67 of the US Open with Arnie and Jack. And some more black and whites of them here. And then obviously as the years go on, we see more guys like Payne Stewart and Lee Trevino there. And then obviously all signs, where do they point to Jack? This natural, like mature looking bunkers with the rough edges, we really tried to re recreate that in the restoration. So you'll see this stuff, you'll see the fescue, you'll see these oh, really? okay. hard lines out there now. What hole is this? 
This is, that might be, um, that might be 17. I was gonna say, is it 17? Because yeah. last time we played with you, we right. did a slow-mo shot, just yeah. like this, in this right. location. It made me think right. of that. Yep, and I was, I was like kind of you standing just out like of the that. bunker there, right? That was, I think that was a shot. It looks like it's 17, because yeah. this bunker is here, and I, if you look at the hillside there, that's the upper course on the other side, all the patrons, but look at all the people that came out. Seriously. This is in the 20s. We gotta try these outfits in our next you know, <laughs> course video, right. just for once. You have uh, some history here, and this, you know, Michael Thorne Bjornsson, he's uh, playing at Stanford right now. He finished fourth in the Travelers two weeks ago wow. as an amateur. So you're gonna hear his name, Akshay Batia, one on the Corn Ferry sure. Tour this right. year. And then all your history from the, the PGA in uh, 05. All right, it's small, but this might be my favorite space in this whole place. Let's look at the scoring room, come here. So this room here, imagine coming in to grab your scorecard here for either the lower or the upper course. And you're surrounded by these player panels which, by the way, change out frequently because there's so much history here. And underneath are their scorecards when they play it here. And then that's framed perfectly, of course, with two of the most recognizable trophies in golf. And this original one-of-one -one original sketch from Tillinghast of the layout of the upper and lower. And this is a room that literally gives me chills. Just a casual note from the Duke of Windsor. Casual. All right, this is another grill room with even more of the beautiful windows looking out across the course. This is the spot to grab a beer before or after your round, whatever you want. And probably my favorite room here at Baltus Raw, the wine cellar. Look at this place. Climate controlled, hundreds of bottles. Great place for a rain delay, right? Check this out. So this is the carriage house which holds rooms, There's actually 30 rooms on ground for members to stay overnight here. So if they live in another state, maybe they're down south, they come up, they can actually stay in some of these rooms. We're actually going to try to get into one to show you what it looks like to stay overnight here at Baltusrol. Secret entrance to the, to the night rooms here. Let's go. Okay, so come on in to one of the rooms, the overnight rooms here we talked about earlier. Mike's already enjoying himself. You got your standard living room with TV, very nice. A little desk, put some treats. Check out the bedroom. The attention to detail in this place is incredible. Look at the pillows on the bed. Come on. Check this out. I think my favorite thing actually is the bathroom. Absolutely incredible. And again, views just continue. Views of the putting green there, the first tee. Look at this place, I mean. I can live here. I can live here. So we gotta check out the fitness center where members can come in, work out, use trainers, there's massage therapy, all that fun stuff. Super cool in there, come check it out. All right, then after you got your workout in, right opposite the fitness center is the performance center. Come see what's inside here. All right, so here are the upstairs hitting bays. Watch the view as Greg opens this up. <laughs> yeah. Talk about target practice, huh? Incredible. This is legit, right? So all the practice balls, Pro V1, Pro V1X. All Titleist Pro Vs. All right, so we've had the tour and now we're back out here. We're on the signature fourth hole. We're gonna have Greg tell us about it because there's some incredible history here. There's also some amazing things that have been done with the renovation. We're gonna play the signature hole and we're gonna take you through it right now. This is a what they would call a, a sympathetic restoration and all that really means is he's adjusted some of the lengths of the tees and the bunkers to where they're hitting the ball today. But the, the core of the golf course is all back to the original Tillinghast design. And what they did was was unique, you know, to our course was there's a lot of history and they did a lot of due diligence. They found ar archive pictures, they found drawings, 
the most important thing was the minutes from all the Greens Committee meetings. Mm. So the Greens Committees, the, you know, that's why they, I never knew why they kept minutes, but now, now I know why. So you know what they're doing on the golf course. So one of his biggest thing that he couldn't settle on, do I cut the trees down on the right of 18 or not? And he left them. And they dug through the archives of the minutes and they found that like in the 40s, they had planted those trees for, you know, protection and for, you know, like separating the fairways. And sometimes they were used for drainage because the pine trees and the weeping willows suck all the water out of the grass. Gotcha. So they, they finally found out that they were not authentic to the Tillinghast design and he took them out. I imagine that was quite a job digging through all those minutes. Oh my God. I mean, we, we have some passionate members here that really are interested in the history. Um, the other thing which was we, we don't get a great view of right now, but if you remember when we did the last video, the back of this hole was all azaleas yes. and rhododendrons yep. and beautiful flowering plants. And, and uh, when he did his town hall with us, somebody asked him what was the hardest decision to make. And he said it was behind number four taking out all the flowering plants because now I'm going to replace it with brown grass. <laughs> right. But, but in season, it's golden brown. It's beautiful. You know, it's authentic to everything that's going on here. So one of the things that I loved about him when he stood up in that meeting was he, he asked the membership, my one ask is that my name is not on the scorecard. This is a Tillinghast design and wow. I'm just restoring it. So I don't want it to be Gil Hance restoration or redo, whatever it is. It's an A.W. Tillinghast course that I'm restoring to its original design. That's amazing. So it was, no we, ego, just for the love no of the, ego. yeah. yeah. It's just incredible. A total, um, took what we gave him and you know created this amazing place right now. And what you don't see is the infrastructure underneath, is all the 27 miles of irrigation pipe um, the drainage and the uh, precision air systems that they have under these. So that's you know, really any condition, like over the summer, it was the hottest summer that we've had in God knows how many years, but they were able to lower the temperature of the green 15 degrees every night. So that they were able to kind of keep the health of the green throughout that season. If you remember the summer, how yes, dry, yeah. they got 0.5 inches of rain in, in July here and we had no issues on the greens. Oh, it's amazing the yeah. level of control. Well, right. earlier you got to take us, you took us through the clubhouse and we got to see some of the, the history there. Unfortunately, we didn't get to make it on the course that day, but we're back and now we're on this signature fourth hole. So let's take some tee shots. And then uh, as we walk up, we can talk a little bit more because there's some very unique history specifically for this hole that we right. want to talk about. Yeah. yeah. So let's put a couple on the green and, and go talk about it. Oh. Putting for birdie. That's the club chip for you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right. Safely on. Safely on. All right. Guys, center of the green, guys. I like that. Play to the fat of the green. That's we right. like using the flat stuff. All right, so we've uncovered a ton of history here, obviously inside. Right. Now that we're out here on the famous hole, tell us a little bit about the fourth here at Baltus Run. Yeah, so I mean, this is the original hole, but it was a lot shorter. It was like back in the 18, or actually 1900s, early 1900s, it was 90 or 100 yards. And then with the modernization of golf. In the 40s, they wanted to lengthen the golf course. They hired uh, Robert Trent Jones to come in and do the modernization of the golf course. And what was a huge change for this hole was they enhanced this pond and they added about 70 yards back. So think about you being here and now you're 70 yards back. So you had your member tee at like 135 or 140 and then you had a you know, pro tee that was back at like 190. And uh, it was not well received by the membership. Originally, yeah, they felt that it was a difficult hole or, you know, significantly more difficult than what it was originally designed to be. But, you know, uh, cooler heads prevailed. And there was a moment though, in uh, after the design was done that the golf pro, Johnny Farrell, the uh, a board member and the greens chairman 
brought Robert Trent Jones down here and he said, you know, let's go play the hole. And they both hit their shots or, you know, they all hit their shots and then Trent Jones gets up and knocks it in the hole. No way. And, uh, <laughs> and he said that uh, I think this hole's pretty fair. So that's kind of this like, you know, legendary story about this hole that really has become our signature hole. I mean, if you look at the, the, uh, the pond and how everything reflects off it, and then you have, you know, the, the view of the clubhouse, it's probably the best view of the property is on top of that hill when you look back at the clubhouse there. Um, but I mean, there's a ton of history here. Uh -huh. um, but how about that, he steps yeah. up. Hole's not fair. Yeah. It's fair, guys. It's fair. I just aced it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Stick it. <laughs> all right. It waved. All right. That's all access. Baltus Roll. Greg, thanks again for taking us through. We appreciate it. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe because we're going to hit up some really awesome golf courses and do more of this. We'll see you in the next video.